Systematic Approach to Teaching Objectives At the end of the lesson, 100% of the students with 80% level of proficiency will be able to Understand the systematic approach Justify the importance and the relation of each element of the process of systemized instruction to the success of the systematic approach Solve that anagram. In this game, you will be given four categories. In each category, there will be anagrams that you need to solve. Now, you will be given three clues. The first clue is how many words the actual answer is. The second clue are the synonyms of the answer. And the third clue is whether the answer is a noun an adjective, a verb, or an adverb. Now, let's get to it. Choose a category. Colt, Ad, Han. These three words are anagrams of one word. This word is synonymous to orderly, and it is an adjective. What is the word? A, Jin, Zero. These three words are anagrams of one word. This word is synonymous to arranging and it is a verb. What is the word? Lilac, go. These two words are anagrams of one word. This word is synonymous to reasonable and it is an adjective. What is the word? Tiff. Niece. These two words are anagrams of one word. This word is synonymous to productive and effective. And it is an adjective. What is the word? The answer is methodical. The answer is organize. The answer is logical. The answer is efficient. How do we define the term systematic? One because it is methodical in procedure or plan, meaning there are a series of steps that need to be followed in order to execute it. Two, it is organized because it is relating to or consisting of a system. This means that the system must be executed in an orderly manner. Three, it is logical because it is presented or formulated as a coherent body of ideas or principles. This referring to systematic thought. Lastly, it is efficient. This referring to systematic efforts where this is effective in class that is marked by thoroughness and regularity. Now that we've defined the term systematic, let us learn more about the systematic approach in teaching. 
The focus of systematic instructional teaching is the learner. This means that all the elements of this approach are dependent on the learner. Now, let us look into the first element. Defining objectives. Instruction begins with a definition of instructional objectives that consider the learner's needs, the learner's interests, and the learner's readiness. Like I've mentioned earlier, all the elements are dependent on the learner. Hence, when we define our objectives, we must consider the learner's needs. Like, what do they need to know? Or, what in what aspects do they need help? Second, we must consider their interests. What piques their attention? What gets them going? We should consider this when making our objectives. And last, we must also consider their readiness, whether they are ready or not to learn the next lesson. Choosing appropriate methods. On the basis of these objectives, the teacher selects the appropriate teaching methods to be used. Will the teacher use direct instruction or indirect instruction? Will he or she teach using the deductive or the inductive method? It all depends on his or her instructional objective, the nature of the subject matter, the readiness of the students, and the facilitating skills of the teacher himself or herself. Choosing appropriate experiences. In turn, based on the teaching method selected, the appropriate learning experiences, appropriate learning materials, equipment, and facilities will also be selected. Some examples of learning activities are reading, writing, interviewing, reporting or doing presentations, discussing, thinking, reflecting, dramatizing, visualizing, creating, judging, and evaluating. Meanwhile, here are examples of learning resources for instructional use. We have textbooks, workbooks, programmed materials, computers, television programs, flat pictures, slides and transparencies, maps, charts, cartoons, posters, models, mock-ups, flannel board materials, chalkboards, and real life objects. Selecting materials, equipment, and facilities. The use of learning materials, equipment, and facilities necessitates assigning the personnel to assist the teacher. Assigning personal roles. Defining the role of any personnel involved in the preparation, setting, and returning of these learning resources would also help in the learning process. In this way, all the personnel involved will have a definite action plan, a definite task that they need to do. Hence, helping the learning process. Implementing the instruction. 
With the instructional objectives in mind, the teacher will now implement the planned instruction with the use of the selected teaching method, learning activities, and learning materials with the help of other personnel whose role had been defined by the teacher. Now that everything is set, the teacher will now implement his or her plan. This is where the execution happens, from instructional objectives, teaching method, learning activities, and learning materials, the teacher's execution or implementation of the plan will ultimately determine the success of his or her teaching. After the implementation, we have evaluating outcomes. After instructions, the teacher will evaluate the outcome of the instruction. These results will determine whether or not the instructional objective was attained. And the last element of the process is, of course, refining the process. If the instructional objectives were attained, the teacher will proceed to the next lesson following the same cycle. But if the instructional objectives were not attained, the teacher's diagnosis will be that the lesson was not learned. Hence, the teacher will find the reason behind this in order for the teacher to find remedial measures for improved student performance and for the attainment of the instructional objectives. Now that we've defined all the elements of the systematic instructional teaching, you might ask, what is the purpose? Well, according to Brown in the year 1969, the purpose is to ensure orderly relationships and interaction of human, technical, and environmental resources to fulfill the goals which have been established for instruction. And that is the systematic approach to teaching. Now, let's check whether you understood the lesson or not. Are the elements independent or are they related to each other? Justify your claims. 